Pokemon Sword is too easy, so I try to make it actually hard by adding a ton of crazy rules. Could I beat the game without catching Pokemon, shopping, Dynamax, overleveling, and more? Well, I tried. Here's how it went. Like the video and subscribe to the channel right now or Wooloo will explode. I'm crazy, I'll do it. Time's up. I can't catch any Pokemon, so picking the right starter will be vital. While my heart says Grookey, I chose Sobble, reluctantly. Leon gives me a catching tutorial which won't be of any help in this run, and Sobble alone is enough to take care of Hop. After the battle, something miraculous falls from the sky. It's everybody's favourite free-to-play game and the sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid's got over 600 playable champions to collect and battle with, each having their own backstory in the world of Teleria. What's more, Raid recently introduced its newest superpower boss, the Hydra. It's got six deadly heads, each equipped with unique skills to destroy your champions. It can scare your champions, rot them from the inside, cloak itself in poison, and much more, making slaying this beast a real puzzle. You'll need strong tactics to beat the Hydra, but if you can win, you'll be rewarded handsomely. My favourite part of Raid is collecting cool champions and building teams to take on awesome boss fights. Once I got the hang of things, I was taking down bosses like nobody's business. But if you want the best rewards, join a clan and you can take on clan bosses. On top of that, there's a ton happening in Raid this month, including new champions and a brand new crypt for the Shadowkin faction. There's also New Year events, tournaments, and a special fusion event where you can get your hands on one of Raid's new legendary champions. With all this going on, this is a great time to get started in Raid. And if you use my link or scan the QR code, new players will get free bonus resources and a free mystery champion to give you a helping hand. Who's the mystery champion? I'll never tell. Just kidding, it's In game, you'll find your rewards in the inbox here for the next 30 days only. So click the link in the description to get started with Raid Shadow Legends today. At the Wild Area Station, these two trainers will give a reward if you've played either of the Let's Go games. Since I've got both, I'm given an Eevee and a Pikachu. They're locked from evolving, but it's just nice to have some extra team members. In Motostoke, Leon hands me a Mystic Water, which I give to Sobble. Fun fact, Nintendo created the Mystic Water by collecting the tears of Pokemon fans during Dexgate. Hmm, I wonder which people in this room are the main characters. Yes, Wooloo, take me to your leader. After evolving Sobble into Drizzile, I decided to take on Milo. It's only the first gym, so I don't really need a plan, right? Well, I wanted more difficulty, and it looks like I got it. On my second attempt, I had Drizzile use Tearful Look to lower Gossiflu's offense. After switching into Pikachu, two Electro Balls finish it off. Dynamax Elder Goss is troublesome, so I go for an Uwu Nuzzle, which causes paralysis. Pikachu, the support god, then hits a Charm and Tail Whip before eventually going down. After Drizzile falls, I'm down to only Eevee, but all of those stat nerfs pay off, and two cupboards give me the win. Milo rewards me with his sweaty farm boy uniform, which I can only assume smells like manure. You keep it, big boy. I'm given a Toxel, which, upon further analysis, its feet look like adorable little bunny rabbits. Please don't hop, please don't hop, please don't hop. Ah! Time to get wet and wild with Nessa in the next gym. Little Pikachu spearheads this gym with its electric typing, taking care of Goldeen with one Electro Ball. Aracuda is fast, so I hit it with a Nuzzle. The paralysis lowers its speed, so an Electro Ball can KO it on the following turn. After paralyzing Dynamax Dreadnought, Pikachu falls to a single Max Geyser. Eevee can stall out the Dynamax with Baby Doll Eyes, before two Water Pulses from Drizzile drench Dreadnought, giving me the second badge. Oleana gives me Rose's Trainer Card, and okay, yep, that's definitely the villain. Kabu's Fire-type gym is treacherous, and this is one of the main reasons for choosing Sobble. I leave Drizzile, and quickly remove Ninetales with two Water Pulses. Arcanine follows soon after, but Center Scorch is where things get a little tricky. Instead of trying to damage it, I go for a Tearful Look to lower its offense. After stalling out the Dynamax, Eevee is my last Pokemon, but at this range, two Cubbits take down that horrifying Centipede. In Hammerlock, we meet up with Rose, the poker-playing cyclist. There's a rumor that if you touch it, you'll have better luck catching Pokemon. Are you mocking me? Now westbound on Route 6, and oh god, what happened to you? You look like you eat kids, and is that a mummified Pikachu? In Stoneside, my team gets a huge upgrade. Toxel evolves into Toxtricity, incredibly cool. Drizzile evolves into the secret agent Inteleon, very cool. And I revive the fossil pieces to obtain Arctosol, literally cool. The next gym leader uses fighting type Pokemon, and my plan was to set up Nasty Plot with Pikachu. I tried sweeping with Discharge, but that didn't go too well for me, and my team was ripped apart. 
Pikachu and Eevee were great in the early game, but they had really fallen behind and would need to fill a more supportive role on the team going forward. In my rematch with B, I settled on a much simpler strategy, leading Inteleon and spamming Snipeshot like it's a Modern Warfare 2 trickshotting lobby. This lets me breeze through B's first few Pokemon, as well as deal some decent damage against Dynamax Machamp before falling. After Pikachu lands a Nuzzle, with Dynamax over, Toxtricity can polish things off with Discharge, giving me badge number 4. Anything else look interesting? Uh, yeah, what about the dog wielding a sword back there? In Belonlia, I pick up the Choice Scarf and Eviolite before heading into the next gym. You take one look at Opal and instantly know what type of gym this is. That's right, it must be a Rock-type gym and Opal's Ace is obviously a Nose Pass. Well, turns out she uses Fairy types, which doesn't make much sense to me, but whatever. I lead with Arctosol, hoping that Opal is psyched out by the snot dripping from its nose. This doesn't quite work out, and Arctosol goes down to a crit. I then send out Captain Price himself, and with a few snipe shots, I clean up Opal's first few Pokemon. But then as Opal sends out Alcremie, I'm posed with a dilemma. I mean, I know what she wants to hear, but uh, I can't help it. After stalling out the Dynamax, Toxtricity cleans up with Venishock. Five badges down. The next gym actually does use rock types, but rocks are known for sinking, not swimming. They don't handle water well, so Inteleon whips out its throbbing intervention and embarrasses Gordy with a few snipe shots. So far, so good. If you aren't subscribed already, don't talk to me or my son ever again. Now that my bike can float, I grab the Assault Vest and Choice Band before heading to the Meth Shack known as Spike Meth for the seventh gym. Pierce's band of dark Pokemon are threatening, but my poisonous punk Toxtricity should have him covered. A few overdrives can take Scrafty down before Malamar is sent out. Since my accuracy has been lowered by Sand Attack, I switch into Inteleon, who hits a four times effective critical hit U-turn onto Malamar for an instant KO. This also gives me a free switch, allowing me to reintroduce Toxtricity. Obstagoon brings me to the brink of death, but Toxtricity lasts just long enough to take it down with Venishock. Last is Guntank, and I know that Toxtricity is as good as dead, so I just go for a Nuzzle. But luck is on my side, with Skuntank being fully paralyzed. A crit overdrive on the next turn takes him down, giving me another clean win. I can now head back to Hammerlock to challenge the final gym right away. Raihan's dragons are a real threat, as I've got minimal offensive options, and this is a double battle. This does present a good opportunity for Drake's ult to shine, who I lead alongside Inteleon. Turn 1 is pretty safe. Inteleon snipe shots Gigalith for big damage, and Arctus ult chimes in with a 4 times effective freeze dry onto Flygon, stopping it in its tracks. Sandaconda is next, but a snipe shot quickly drowns that snake. I fell just short of taking Gigalith down, allowing it to land a body press, which finishes Inteleon. Dynamax Duraludon is a pest, so I send Pikachu out and land a Nuzzle. Arctazolt finally finishes Gigalith, making it a 2 on 1. While stalling out the Dynamax, a charm from Eevee harshly lowers Duraludon's attack. Once Eevee goes down, and the Dynamax ends, a string of attacks from Pikachu and Toxtricity finishes the fight, giving me the final badge. I'm surprised by how smooth this run has been so far, but I still had the toughest battles ahead of me. A quick trip through Route 10 is never complete without slabbing Cavi Jeffrey across his smug face. This brings me to Winden for the final leg of the challenge. The next section of the game involves a bunch of back-to-back -back battles. These were not easy by any means, but honestly, they didn't give me too much trouble, and I managed to get by, relying on a lot of the moves and strategies that we've already seen in this run. That was until the final rematch of the Champions Cup in a matchup against Raihan. This one definitely has me a little worried. Torkoal can do big damage, so I lead with Choice Specs Toxtricity and take it down with a powerful overdrive. The Choice Specs locks me into overdrive, and since Flygon has a ground typing, I need to switch out. I go into Eevee, landing a charm, as well as a baby doll eyes, lowering Flygon's attack by three stages. This lets me switch into Arctazolt, who can now comfortably tank an Earthquake before hitting a Freeze Dryer to knock Flygon out in one shot. Turtonator looks threatening, but it only tries to use Shell Trap, which will only work if I use a physical move. Knowing this, I simply hit it with two Ancient Powers, which cleanly takes it down, while giving me an Omni Boost in the process. This helps me to take care of Gudra with two Freeze Dries. Last is Dynamax Duraludon, but as we know, this guy is deadly. I land a decent chunk of damage before Arctus Ult falls. The problem, however, is that Duraludon's attack has been raised by two stages from Max Knuckle. I go with Pikachu and land a Nuzzle, bringing an end to the Dynamax. In a new strategy, I then have Inteleon use Soak, a pretty unique move which changes the target's type to water. I was planning on using Toxtricity to overdrive into the now water type Duraludon, but Inteleon hung on and a few snipe shots was able to finish Duraludon, giving me the win. 
Just before I can take on Leon, Rose decides to initiate his D-Day plan like you couldn't wait five more minutes. Ugh. This is by far the toughest battle yet. Rose's steel types are bulky, hard hitters, and I don't have any way of dealing with his team. I lead with Eevee and try to nerf Escavalier's monstrous attack by landing two charms. Once Eevee goes down, two snipe shots from Inteleon are enough to take it out. Rose then sends out Ferrothorn, who is an absolute pain to deal with. I switched into Arctazolt, who quickly fell in two turns. Throwing Caution to the wind, I went with Inteleon and tried spamming Snipe Shot. Fortunately, Ferrothorn was more interested in using Curse, allowing me to surprisingly take it down. A few Snipe Shots allowed me to finish Rose's next few Pokemon, and things were looking good. Until Copper Ardra arrived. With no way of stalling out the Dynamax, I could only watch helplessly as the rest of my team was obliterated. On my next attempt, I tweaked my strategy slightly, but the results were the exact same. On the next attempt though, I was feeling a little more confident. The beginning of the fight was similar, however, I sent Eevee out against Ferrothorn, this time to lower its attack with Charm. This means that Arctazolt won't go down so easily, resulting in it being able to take Ferrothorn out with Freeze Dry. Arctazolt does fall to Berserker, but not before landing big damage with Discharge. Inteleon once again handles the next few enemies, before Copperaja returns, looking for blood. My plan is to use Soak on Copperaja to turn it into a water type, but my choice specs have locked me into Snipe Shot. I get around this by switching into Pikachu, who is guaranteed to survive an attack thanks to its Focus Sash. Since I outspeed, on the next turn, I paralyze Copperaja with Nuzzle just before Pikachu falls. I can now bring Inteleon back out, and I'm no longer locked into a move, which allows me to hit it with Soak, turning Copperaja into a water type. Once Inteleon falls, two overdrives are enough to finally give me the win. You can tell just how close that battle was by looking at the shape of my team after the battle. With that, only one hurdle remained in the form of the champion, Leon. His team is diverse and incredibly tough, so making it through this battle will be no easy feat. As the Rose fight showed, Steel types are a pain for me to deal with. Against Aegislash, I lead with Inteleon and land a snipe shot. It does less than half health, but once Aegislash switches into its blade form, its defenses are lower, allowing me to take it down with a second snipe shot. Inteleon is slower than Dragapult, so I use Sucker Punch, which has a plus one priority, and hits for super effective damage. I got so lucky here, as not only did my Sucker Punch crit, but Inteleon also survives an attack out of sheer love. That lets me land another Sucker Punch, spelling the end of Dragapult. Rillaboom is a big threat, so I turn it into a water type with Soak to make it easier to deal with. A U-turn lets me save Inteleon for another day while switching into Toxtricity, and a super effective overdrive on the next turn sends Rillaboom back to the jungle. I know that Haxorus will go for Earthquake, so I switch into Eevee, who is holding an air balloon, giving me a free switch. Eevee can then nerf Haxorus's attack by using Baby Doll Eyes twice, before eventually falling. My choice specs Arctazolt can now comfortably take an attack from Haxorus and then take it down with Freeze Dry. Rhyperia is next, and Freeze Dry falls just short of getting the KO, but Rhyperia was frozen. After Leon heals, two more Freeze Dries pick up the KO. Leon was down to only his Charizard, who makes very quick work of removing my Arctazolt. I go into Pikachu to try and land a Nuzzle, but Charizard is faster and eradicates my little electric mouse. Toxtricity has a Choice Scarf though, allowing it to outspeed Charizard and land big damage with Overdrive. It's not enough to get the KO, but Charizard ultimately falls to its own Sandstorm damage at the end of the turn. I had some insane luck in that fight, but in a challenge like this with so many rules, I definitely needed it. Before you go, like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's completely free, but it really does help me out. You can also catch me live over on Twitch, so stop by and say hi. Jump into this video next. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.